no, 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 what you just watched was the beginning of Dion's tutorial. Usually, setting up cutscenes like this one takes a ton of time. However, this particular cutscene took me just a few minutes to set up, thanks to my new tool called Sequencer. Opposed to usual solutions used for making cutscenes, Sequencer allows you to chain events instead of placing them on a timeline, which makes creating, modifying and iterating cutscenes extremely simple and fast. So let's take a closer look at it. Sequencer consists of three main parts. Sequencer, Sequence and Playables. Sequencer is what's the brain of the system, containing a reference to a sequence scriptable object and processing the playables. What's happening under the hood is the sequencer has a list of currently playing playables. Each frame, it calls a process method on them, moving on to the next ones after completing them. The sequence scriptable object holds all of the playables, their data and playable links, which specify which playables will play next. Playables' most important component is the process method, which will do whatever you want it to. It can execute a one-time event, move an object over playables duration time, make your characters talk with the help of your dialogue system, or make decisions based on runtime variables. Best part is, setting up sequences takes almost no time, thanks to the custom-made tool that allows you to drag nodes around, connect them with each other, and input data straight into your playables through custom inspectors showing on the nodes. Of course, you can expand the sequencer as much as you like by adding custom playables, giving them unique title colors to better distinguish them in the editor, and programming your custom behaviors better suiting your own projects. Let me show you an example of this. Assume we want to move the player to another position. All I need to do is make a new playable, get a reference to player's transform and the target position. Finally, inside the process method, we can just say player.position equals target and return the base process method to tell the sequencer that we finished. Well, there's one problem with this. Unity scriptable objects can save references to scene objects. What that means for us is that the next time we reload Unity, we will lose the reference to the player. Luckily, Sequencer handles this problem with exposed references. All we have to change inside of our playable is make the player transform an exposed reference of type transform, and then just change the player for player.resolve and pass in the sequencer as our argument. What Resolve will do is find the correct object at runtime and return it to us. This one change allows us to use one sequence for multiple sequencers, referencing different objects, letting us reuse cutscenes. Going back to our playable, what if we want the player to move over time to the destination instead of teleporting? Well, first, let's inherit from a timed playable that will handle the time for us. Then, inside the start method, we will get the start position of the player. And in a process method, instead of setting the position to target, let's lerp between start and target using normalized time that is provided by the timed playable class as our third argument. And that's it. If you were interested in trying out the tool yourself, go over to my Patreon. I have posted there more information on how to get access to the tool. Or if you want to learn game development yourself, give a try to my 100% free game development beginner course. First link in the description.